Hey guys, time for a, a weekly tip video. Got Amina here, one of my Sumatran short tails that I produced. Um, tonight I'm going to focus on, uh, for those of you that, you know, have more than one snake really, or as you get into multiples or many, uh, some of us have just some kind of uh, tricks and things that you can do to kind of help you better to manage your time. Um, I, I don't know what she's doing. Um, so just remember too, if you guys are enjoying the videos to like, subscribe, feel free to share them, whether it's in applicable situations or just in general. Um, also, the last video that I posted was uh, a video of my, uh, my late dog who passed away and my cat. Um, I had talked to some people on my Instagram and they wanted to see more, you know, a few occasional videos of some other animals on there. Uh, so check that out and see if you like that kind of content. And feel free to comment on that video if you want to see more of that. Not so much. Um, like I said, I can't go live on this. So the only way I can ask you questions is through videos like these. So anyways, as far as managing larger collections go, a lot of the stuff that you do in the beginning when you have one or two snakes um, sometimes isn't as practical. One thing that I've really scaled back on is record keeping. Um, record keeping is a great thing to do. So if you have the time, um, it's never really a waste of time to do that. Uh, I just have, you know, at any one time, sometimes over 100 animals. Uh, so keeping records on every little thing really doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I do keep records on, you know, stuff to do with gravid females. Or if there's any behavior that's off, that I'm not quite sure what's going on. It was just weird. I'll note that. Although usually, to be honest, most things are just kind of in my head. Um, and I don't really need... Uh, to write them down in order to remember what's going on. I don't write down any feedings. I don't write down sheds. I don't write down bowel movements. Uh, and I'm not encouraging you not to do that. If you need those records, use those records. Uh, I know most things in my head. It's just kind of the way that I work. Uh, other things that I do to save time, especially when I'm gonna do cleaning and things of that nature, I try to have everything laid out in advance. That includes, I'll take paper towels and uh, once you've kept long enough, you kind of know exactly how many paper towels you need for each different thing. So like I use one, one uh, of the sectional towels on like the, the baby's water dishes, two in that size tub. Uh, some of the larger tubs I might need four, the bigger cages I might need even six or eight. And so depending on what I'm going to be cleaning, I lay that stuff out in advance. And I'll pull, you know, maybe 15 or 20 of the individual ones and then a few of the twos, a few threes, fours, whatever it is that I'm going to need. Same thing, I use a lot of newspaper for substrate in my cages. Uh, so one thing that I do, not even just before I clean, but if I'm having some downtime where I'm just going to sit down and watch TV or something on Netflix, whatever it is, or I'm just sitting down to take a break, I'll fold some newspaper into whatever size I know I need for whatever cages and have a stockpile available ready to go. That way when I am cleaning, I can breeze through that much faster. Uh, and be more efficient. I don't have to stop and fold the paper for each cage as I'm going, you know, whatever it is. Another thing that I do when I get my paper is I separate all my paper and I organize it by like size and the way that it folds. So, you know, you get your normal like, uh, you know, uh, New York Times paper or whatever. I'm trying to think like a paper everybody would know. Um, and you, you have all different types of paper in there. Some of them you know, open sideways, some of them open top to bottom. So I organize them all so that I have one complete, you know, section or whatever, so that I can use that efficiently too. Um, also, uh, I don't have a sink in my snake room, so I have to fill up my water in jugs and bring it in there with me. So I do that in advance. Um, I usually keep three or four jugs around at a time so I can have, you know, two to four gallons of water at a time with me. That way, if I do have to stop and refill it, it's only once or twice. It's not every single time I run out of a gallon, I gotta go back and do it. Especially like if I'm cleaning the ARS rack, usually that thing, that whole rack takes about four gallons of water, roughly, uh, to fill all those dishes. So I like to have that planned out in advance um, so that I don't have to sit there and stop four times while I'm cleaning that one rack to fill up water. It's just not really efficient. Um, now, one thing that you don't want to speed through when you're doing is you always want to get your hands on the animal while you're cleaning. Uh, you know, you're going to feel their body tone. You're going to feel 
their movement. You'll be able to notice if anything's off. Um, so that is your time, especially if you don't recreationally handle much, that's your time to really check out what's going on with your animals. Uh, and that's really, really important. That's why a lot of us don't like other people cleaning our snakes. Um, besides the fact that you never trust anybody to do things the way that you do it, it's just now, you know, let's say that snake doesn't need to be cleaned again for a week and it had been a week before that. Now it's a two week period where you haven't put your hands on that animal yourself. Uh, just not something that I really like. I like to know what's going on with them. I like to feel how they are. How does their skin feel? How do their scales feel? Um, you know, is their weight good? Do I need to up their feeding, back off on their feeding? Uh, does it feel like they they haven't had a bowel movement in a while? Is there a urate stuck in there? Or is everything coming out the way it should? Like she just went to the bathroom recently, so you can see there's nothing in there. You know, she's nice and empty. Probably some water, you know, a little bit, not much though. Um, cause I just, I just cleaned her last night, which means she got fresh water and typically short tails go right to fresh water as soon as you change it. Um, they really seem to enjoy it a lot. A lot of snakes do, but especially them. Uh, so all those things are things that can help you, you know, speed along. If you're using other substrate, you know, prep your substrate ahead of time. Uh, like the moss, you can soak the moss while you're sitting, relaxing, doing something else. Uh, the more that you set yourself up for success, you know, in advance, the easier it is and the more time you have to actually enjoy the animals. And uh, like, I like to break it up. Obviously, if I go in the snake room and somebody needs to be cleaned, they're gonna get cleaned. But I also have every day of the week, you know, 10, 20, 30 cages, whatever it is, that that day of the week, I'm gonna clean regardless. So that way, every single week they're getting done. Even if I miss something or I cleaned it somewhere else during the week. Obviously, if it's that day and I cleaned it the day before or something, then no, I won't clean it again just to clean it. Um, but that's just something, you know, I like to make sure it helps me not miss a snake and all of a sudden I was cleaning and I skipped a cage for some reason and forgot somebody. Uh, this prevents it from going on too long, um, especially when you have larger collections and it's easy to get distracted and things like that. So it's just a fail safe that I like to use. Um, it's just every week, you know, on a given day, I'm gonna check these cages. Um, also that helps too, to prevent cross-contamination. Uh, if you go in, you do those cages, I'd say you clean up and then you can bounce around and hit anything else that you need to. Um, but it's nice to work in sections like that when you have a larger collection. Just really eliminates a lot of risk or at least helps minimize it, uh, which is definitely important. I'm gonna show off the camera, I'm just gonna sit down there. She's just putting her head on the table. Being a lazy. That's yeah, Sumatran short tails. Unless there's food involved, they don't really care about anything. Uh, so any other questions you have or any other tip ideas that you do to help you, uh, you know, prepare and get going? Obviously, I make sure my cleaner's all set in advance. My trash is where it needs to be. You know, all those little things will really help uh, make everything go smoother. And, uh, you know, sometimes I can get through 50 cages in, in an hour or two because I have everything laid out, everything's there, nice and easy. All you gotta do is scrub, whatever. You know, I have, I have different holding bins for different sections of animals. Uh, the ARS rack, I just always leave one bin open and that bin's where those guys go while I'm cleaning them, um, which is all nice and easy until you're cleaning the ones right above it and it's kind of a pain to open that one, get them out, you gotta shut it and stuff like that. But it definitely, uh, definitely helps. And if you are using racks and things, ideally, if you can always leave one space in each rack, that's the space where you can uh, put the animals while you clean. Or if you get into a situation where you're, you know, pressed for time, it's an emergency, you're in and out, the animal's dirty, you can shift it into that spare bin for now and, you know, take care of the bin later on that it was in. Uh, so that's a really nice thing to have if you do have racks to have that empty one. Uh, that'll save you a lot of hassle. You know, some days we just run out of time for whatever reason. At least, you know, the snake is in a clean environment and then you can clean that cage when you have time, you know, the following, you know, day or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that. Let me know what you guys are thinking. I'm always open to ideas for videos. Uh, some of you have pitched a few, very few of you though. Uh, enough of you watch, let's get some ideas and let's see what we can cover. Uh, we'll see you on Thursday with a Meet the Collection. I'm not sure who I'm going to do yet, 
kind of just fly by the seat of my pants on these videos. So uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see you guys.